I'm Mark Golub sitting in for vacationing Tisha Bader with the Shalom TV News Update for Friday, May 31st, 2013. And it's all good. As with yesterday, the BDS movement is in the news again, but this time it's a happier story for people of goodwill and for the supporters of the State of Israel. As the SEC, the Securities and Exchange Commission, has in essence blocked an attempt to force one of this nation's largest pension funds from divestment. The fund is known by its letters, T-I-A-A-C-R-E-F, which stands for Teachers Insurance and Annuity Association College Retirement Equities Fund. It's a Fortune 100 financial firm, which describes itself as offering financial services to meet the needs of people throughout the nonprofit world. And it currently manages $520 billion in pension and retirement and insurance funds. And of course, the TIAA CREF invests in many companies, including Israeli companies working on the West Bank and American companies doing business with Israel, such as the American giant heavy machinery manufacturer Caterpillar, which has contracts with the Israeli army. Well, an assistant professor of history at Southern Illinois University, Steve Tamari, is a client of the fund, and he filed an action that sought to force the pension fund to divest from Israeli companies and American companies doing business with Israel. A similar action was brought against the fund in 2011 by an organization known as Jewish Voice for Peace, characterized by the Israel Law Center as anti-Semitic and anti-Israel. In 2011, the SEC rejected the attempt to force the fund to divest, and now once again in 2013, the SEC has reaffirmed its position that the pension fund does not have to consider divesting from companies located on the West Bank. And in another victory of sorts, it deals with a victory for non-Orthodox expressions of Judaism in the state of Israel. As many of you know, the state of Israel has traditionally funded only ultra-Orthodox groups in Israel. And due to the disproportionate power wielded by these tiny Orthodox parties that have been crucial in propping up Israeli coalition governments. These ultra-Orthodox parties have blocked the funding of any non-Orthodox institutions in Israel. So that the Reform Movement in Israel, or the Masorti Movement, which is what the Conservative Movement is called in Israel, both have basically gone without government funding. But now, Naftali Bennett, who represents a new coalition of Orthodox groups with his Jewish Home Party, and who heads Israel's Religious Services Ministry. Naftali Bennett is proposing that the Israeli government begin funding rabbis of all movements of Judaism. The Bennett proposal also would implement a new plan by which Israeli communities would have the right to choose their own rabbis rather than the current system in Israel by which the government sends a rabbi to a community. Bennett's goal is for religious power to be taken out of the hands of the ultra-Orthodox chief rabbinate and given instead to Israeli citizens, something which most American Jews would think would be axiomatic in Israeli life, but which actually would be revolutionary for the state of Israel. Leaders of the Reform and Conservative movements in America and many in the Orthodox community here are now hoping that Bennett follows through on his plans to bring Jewish pluralism to the Jewish state. We'll keep you informed. And finally, congratulations go today to a 13-year-old Arvind Mahankali of Bayside Hills, New York, who won the 2013 Scripps National Spelling Bee. And what word did Arvine spell to capture the title? Knadel, which of course is the Yiddish word for a small matzo ball, K. 
Knädel. K N E I D E L Knädel. As the late Harry Golden often said and wrote, only in America. And that's the Shalom TV News update for the last day of May, May 31st, 2013. Thanks to Herbie Balamovsky for helping to produce this Shalom TV News update. I'm Mark Golub. Be well, my friends, and Shabbat Shalom. <laughs>